What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and in this video I'm going to be telling you about the top five nastiest things I ever saw in prison. Before we get into that though, I got to make a quick announcement. R.I.P. to this camera right here. This is a camera that I had for about six months. This is what I was shooting videos with for the entirety of that time every single day. But this Canon 70D DSLR piece of went about that life for real and all of a sudden this thing just stopped working on me. This is like a $1,200 camera and now, and now it's dead. I don't know what the hell was wrong with it. I was doing a podcast with Yanni over the weekend and then all of a sudden the damn thing, it just, it just cut off and it wouldn't cut back on again. I tried to do CPR on the camera. <gasps> don't you tell me you were $1,200. <laughs> I got a new camera here. I went back to a camcorder. That's actually what I first started doing after prison show videos with. So I'm back to a camcorder for a number of reasons. And I really hope the video we're able to capture with this camcorder is good. This is a really good 1080p camcorder. And I want you guys to let me know exactly what you think about this. Does the picture look okay? I really hope that it does. But again, moving on in this video, we're going to be talking about the top five nastiest things that I saw while locked up. And I swear to you, as I was trying to put the ideas together for this video, what was actually going to make this list? I mean, there were so many things that came to mind. I could tell them about this or I could tell them about... Oh, <laughs> Sorry, just thinking about some of these things makes me throw up inside of my mouth just a little bit. But like I was saying, there were a lot of things that could have made the list, could have made this video. I mean, there's a story for each and every one of these things. We could get back to telling some prison stories. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to be doing that in this video. There were so many things I could have put in this video. Again, I'm only putting five in here. And if you guys like this, we will turn this into a series. So with all of that, let's go ahead and get into these top five nastiest, <laughs> nastiest things that I saw in prison. Hey, yo, back up. Back up. You're way too close to me. The first nastiest thing to make this list most certainly has to deal with food. And I'm not talking about that horrible, wretched dog food-like substance that they're feeding you out of the chow hall on a daily basis. No. We'll have to save that one for another video. However, in relation to food being the nastiest thing that I saw in prison, my god! There's a lot of nasty things that takes place dealing with some food. Imagine this nightmare of a thought right here. You're sitting in the cell block, they've just served trays, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it doesn't even matter. But everybody's eating their tray, and in some cases, you're going to have to take those trays and place those in a pile, maybe back inside of a cart, wherever. But after you've gotten done eating whatever wretched meal that you have, you take that tray, you place that wherever it's supposed to go, in that pile, just like all of the other prisoners are doing. And then all of a sudden, you see another prisoner go over to that pile of trays and start picking through them. Hey man, this dude ain't eat his cabbage. Mm. Oh my god, I love prison cabbage. Oh man, this dude left a piece of a cake, what? Hey. Prison cake. God, that's so good. Man, this guy left some gravy on his tray. Oh, meat rock prison gravy. Mm. Prison food is so good. Now, of course, I did get a little dramatic there. However, I legitimately did see a guy lick another prisoner's tray from that tray pile, licking some gravy off of that tray. I can't be seeing this correctly. This guy is over here licking the gravy off of these used trays. I gotta give this guy a ramen noodle. And I know this sounds crazy, however, you gotta keep in mind where we're at. We're talking about prison for God's sakes. And not everybody in here is gonna have money, they're not gonna have ramen noodle soups in their lockers, they're not gonna have any sort of zoom zooms and wham whams, hell, they probably don't even have any friends. Because one thing's for certain, in prison when it comes to the people you associate with, one type of prisoner you never want to associate with is the type of guy who has absolutely zip zero, not a soup in his locker, not a hustle, not a prison job, no type of income at all, and prisoners like this are going to be referred to as like homeless guys in prison. Man, how in the hell are you homeless in prison? You can't find no hustle in here. You can't wash no laundry. Hey, wait a minute. Where's my laundry man at? Hey, coffee man, you ain't washed my laundry yet. Where's my laundry? Coffee man actually was my laundry man. But with the fact that you will have these homeless-like prisoners oftentimes referred to as seagulls, pigeons, vultures, and it's all birds that these guys will be nicknamed after. Kind of an interesting fact to throw in there as well. But because you will have this type of prisoner oftentimes nicknamed after a bird. Man, look at that vulture over there digging through them trays. Man, you all know what them people did to those trays, man. You a vulture mixed with a seagull and a pigeon. You nasty. Not a lot of other prisoners are going to want to help these guys out. So because of that, these guys, they have to fend for themselves. And fend for themselves, they definitely do. 
cabbage, a piece of cake, and some gravy. Jackpot. Mmm, <laughs> that gravy! I gotta tell you, watching a grown man lick a tray in prison just to get the gravy off of that tray? Well, that's pretty damn nasty. And if you don't think that it is, well, let me go ahead and move on to the second nastiest thing that I saw while locked up that also deals with a prison food tray. Now, the food tray in this story, it didn't look like one of these kind of trays. It actually was just a bottom of a tray, kind of like this, and on top of the tray would sit two Tupperware containers. One for the hot part of the meal and one for the cold. Maybe for like the bread, maybe the butter, maybe the jelly. Whatever they were going to put on that cold side would be over here, hot side over here. And it's the second thing that I'm going to be telling you about that ties into that first nasty thing and also emphasizes that you just don't know what prisoners do to those food trays that they get. And to be somebody who's digging through those trays looking for scraps, you don't know what the next man done did to that tray. And I gotta assure you, when I tell you this second thing, it's only gonna prove that sometimes prisoners are just some nasty mother <laughs> They really are. But the second nastiest thing that I want to tell you about happened during a time when I was working inside of the prison kitchen. And when you get a job inside of a prison kitchen, you often have to start in the dish room, the tray room as it's referred. Now inside of the tray room, you're going to have a couple of prisoners who work in here. You're going to have teams. You might have like six guys working in there. Maybe it's five. I can't remember exactly. But what they'll do is they'll bring the carts into the kitchen with all of the trays inside of those carts from all of the different cell blocks and housing units. Then you got a guy who empties out the carts, stacking them up. You got a another guy who bangs out the trays and sends them on his way. You got another guy who sprays off the trays. You got another guy who puts them through the machine. You got another guy who takes them out of the machine and then stacks the trays up. And during this time, I had the worst job inside of the tray room because my job was the banger. Oh, you was the banger in prison? Hold, I, I know it's... I was the banger. Joe, the prison kitchen tray room banger. And you know, that actually sounds like kind of an important job. I mean, it's definitely long enough to sound important. Can you imagine meeting a girl in the free world telling her what you do for a living? Oh, what do I do? Girl, I am the prison kitchen tray room banger. Hey, where you going? But the reason this job sucked and the reason it was the worst job is because anytime you were banging out these trays, you were going to get food all over you. You would wear this little plastic apron, but it did no justice because by the time you got done working your shift, which usually was all day long, by the time you got done working that shift, you came out of there looking like the damn trash can. I know what your job in that kitchen is. Boy, you need a shower. Meanwhile, you'll have those vulture seagull pigeon prisoners coming up to you like, Hey, can I get that gravy that's on your ear right there? Man, you better get away from me, man. The hell is wrong? I'll give you a ramen noodle. Man, get away! Stop trying to lick my ear! And you would definitely get dirty doing this job, and if prison food wasn't bad enough, well then imagine being covered in it. I think you got a piece of cabbage on your other ear. Can I get the cabbage too? But this one day when I was in the prison kitchen in my tray room banger's position. I mean, your prison kitchen tray room banger's position? It's okay. I understand what happened to you. But this one day while I'm in the kitchen doing my job, banging out these trays, sending them on their way, the other guys taking them out of the cart, putting them there in front of me, I've got piles and stacks of trays all around me. And you could not possibly imagine how many trays you have to wash per meal, depending on where you're at, how many prisoners are there. You could be washing thousands of trays for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But as I'm sitting there doing my job, taking these trays, taking the lids off, banging them out, sending them on down the line, another tray, lids, banging, send it down the line, you're not really paying attention to anything because it's so monotonous that you almost feel like a machine. But as I'm doing my job, I go to grab the next tray, put it down, realize it feels heavy, this is probably just an uneaten tray, go to take the lids off and BOOM! Oh, what is the smell? I am completely overcome with the smell of a whole lot of doo-doo. I look down into this tray and see that this thing is absolutely packed full of some doo-doo. I don't even want to touch this thing. I'm like, what? what? How did I get this thing completely full in every compartment? This thing is completely full with doo-doo. It's like they held this in for three days waiting so they could do this, knowing that it was going to take a lot of doo-doo to be able to do this. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, why would somebody do this? What were they hoping to prove by doing this? I take this tray and I just threw the damn thing in the trash can. And then what I see underneath those two little Tupperware compartments there's a note hidden right there between the bottom of the tray and the two Tupperware compartments. They had put a note right there on the tray knowing that somebody was going to see this. I'm the one who's seeing this. And all that note said was enjoy with a little crudely drawn smiley face. <laughs> 
Hey, yo, that was a good one. Whoever did that, that... <laughs> And I didn't know who did this. This trade could have came from anywhere. Most likely it came from segregation somewhere where some guy was really pissed off or absolutely bonkers crazy out of his damn mind to sit there and squat over a tray. Yeah, <laughs> I got him now. I got him. And again, I have no idea who did this. I'm sure it was somebody back in segregation doing this for whatever reason. Maybe this was going to be like the highlight of their day. Once they passed that tray back and whoever went down there to pick those trays up, they were probably sitting right there in the little segregation cell just counting the minutes down, thinking that probably at this exact time, <laughs> I know they opened that tray right now. <laughs> I need another tray. Needless to say, I threw that tray away. And to think that you'll have other prisoners who will go and dig through trays looking for scraps that other guys might have left on those trays, you don't know what these guys be doing in them trays for real because I'm telling you, you got some nasty dudes locked up. The third nastiest thing that I saw while locked up deals with why I quit smoking cigarettes while I was in prison. Now when I got to prison, you couldn't smoke cigarettes. They had just done away with smoking. In 2009, they had done away with it. I was getting to prison, I think in like 2011. But getting to the first prison that I would go to, you couldn't tell that smoking was outlawed because there was so much tobacco in there. So many guys were smoking. There was so much smoke in there. I mean, this place damn near looked like Woodstock. Good Lord, this is prison? I mean, why is it so smoky in here, man? I, I didn't even think we was allowed to smoke in here. My God, that man's got a trash bag full of tobacco and a digital scale? This prison was absolutely flooded with tobacco. You could get a roll up there for like a dollar fifty, maybe a dollar. And a roll up is like one cigarette broken down into three cigarettes. However, at this prison, those roll ups were as fat as my pinky finger. So you really were getting a lot of tobacco for a really low price in comparison to another prison where you might pay like two, three dollars for a roll up that's like as skinny as a toothpick. But when I got to this prison, I immediately fit right in. I immediately started tattooing and I immediately began smoking. I was doing tattoos like a hundred miles an hour and was damn near getting tobacco thrown at me. Tobacco, 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 do a tattoo for me. I got you, man. I got you. Whatever you want. And when I got to this prison, this level one work center that I was sent to right after receiving, I still had five years left to serve. So let me tell you, I was smoking hella roll-ups back then. Five, five years left to serve. Oh yeah, I kind of took the edge off. But the reason that I quit smoking while at this prison is because this place became dry. They busted all the tobacco that was coming in. Guys were bringing this back in from the work that they were doing outside of the prison. They were trying to get this stuff thrown over the fence. One pound, two pounds, three pounds. I hope that gets to you guys. I mean, guys were legitimately trying to get tobacco thrown over the fence. It was getting caught in the barbed wire. We're looking out the window seeing this like, man, there's like seven pounds of tobacco up there in the barbed wire. Hey, God, pop the back door. It's wreck time. Yeah, the guards would end up getting that. But again, this prison became dry, tempers were flaring, guys were fighting, I mean, everybody was stressed out, everybody needed a cigarette, hell, I needed a cigarette, I can't, I got nothing, I got, I got nothing. It was a stressful time to be at this level one prison where everybody's dealing with these nicotine withdrawals. And things got so bad that guys were doing all sorts of crazy things. Getting cigarette butts, breaking those down, trying to make roll-ups out of those. Where this prison was located at was way out in the country around all of these tobacco fields. Guys were grabbing real tobacco leaves off of the plants. <laughs> we got all the cigarettes in the world. We ain't never gonna go without smoking. Smuggling that back inside, putting that into the microwave, trying to cure it or dry it or whatever. And would roll this up and smoke it and this would damn near take their heads off. <laughs> I don't know what it is about tobacco right off the plant, but that's some strong stuff right there. But the final straw for me was when I saw this guy who was going through withdrawal so bad that he actually followed a guard around who had dip inside of his lip and was spitting dip. And he waited for this guard to spit this dip out. When this guard did, he scooped that up, put that inside of the microwave, dried that out, rolled it up, and smoked it. <laughs> you know what? After seeing that right there, I'm done smoking. I don't know if I'm gonna have anything left in my stomach after I'm done with this video, after earling so much, reliving some of these disgusting, nasty moments. But with that, let's go ahead and move on to number four, which took place at the last prison that I was at and involved the prison art room. Prison art room, you say? What could be so nasty about a place like that? Oh, believe me, 
I'm about to tell you. The prison art room at this last prison I was at, this was a place where all the artists would go and hang out. They would have some time. They could draw, they could paint, they could do whatever it is that they were working on. It really was a cool little room to be able to go and hang out in. However, this is prison we're talking about. And nothing that's good in prison is ever really all that good. In this prison art room, it was no exception because it had a really bad reputation. And what this reputation was, was that you would have guys who would go meet up in this art room and they would um, do things to each other. Now, when I first started going to this art room, I was unaware of the reputation. But looking back on this in hindsight, you know, it makes a lot more sense to me now when I think back and I would tell guys back then, hey, Joe, we going outside to play some basketball. You trying to ball? Hey, I can't right now. I'm going to the art room. Got some things I got to work on. <laughs> hey, you going to the art room for real? Oh, I didn't even know, yo. Hey, hey, go work on them things, Joe. Hey, you go work on them things. You ain't playing basketball with us no more. And you know, thinking about it, it makes a lot of sense why they wouldn't let me back on the basketball court for a little while. Now, the crazy thing about this is how I found out about this art room and its reputation. And it wasn't that anybody actually told this to me. Nobody came up to me saying, Hey, Joe, for real, man, you know what's going on in that art room, don't you? A whole lot of drawing? Hell no, I ain't talking about no drawing. They're doing something else with them hands up there. Damnedest thing about it is, nobody ever told me. Yeah, I would actually find out about this reputation one day while I was up there drawing. And as I was drawing my little picture right there on the desk, I couldn't help but to notice the desk was shaking. Hey, is there an earthquake in here? Now, I wasn't the only guy in this art room. There was a couple of other people in there as well. However, opposite side of the table from me, there were two guys who were sitting pretty close together. And as this table was shaking as I was drawing my picture, hey, man, what? Hey, yo, y'all feel that? I looked down to the opposite side of the table where these other two prisoners were sitting at, sitting very close to each other, and I couldn't help but to notice one prisoner's hand was somewhere it shouldn't have been. Oh. My. God! And you know, back during the time when all of this took place, I was drawing a lot of cartoons about all sorts of crazy things that I would see or experience while locked up. And this story here, there's a cartoon for it. You can see me sitting here trying to draw my picture and opposite me on the other side of that table, there's those two guys over there and doing whatever the hell they're over there doing. Coming in at number five on this list of nastiest things that I saw in prison, this one is damn crazy. This one also takes place at the last prison I was at, and at this prison, you had what is oftentimes referred to as inmate police. Prisoners who had to police other prisoners. Prisoners policing other prisoners. Hey, yo, where, where, where they doing that at? Well, they were doing it at this very last prison I was at, that's for sure. But these inmate police had a fancy name, and they were called cadres. And in most cases, these cadres, they were like the worst of the worst. These guys acted, in some cases, worse than the damn guards at the prison. In fact, if you were to put the prisoner inside of the guard uniform, you'd probably have the worst damn prison guard you ever seen in your life. And because of the fact that some of these guys were so terrible, I mean, in a lot of cases, these guys were absolutely hated by the entire prison compound. In fact, even if you were an R right cadre, one that really didn't care about the rules, just because you carried around that title that you a cadre. Hey, you know what, man? You seem like a pretty cool dude. Man, I'm touched, man. Thank you so much. I just want to let you know I'm also a cadre. Hey, you know what, man? Hey, man, don't ever talk to me again, man. Get away from me, man. And nobody like these cadres. And this one cadre in particular, this guy might have just been the most hated cadre ever. I mean, this guy was so bad thought that he was the police so much. He wanted to be like the shining example of what a prisoner should be. And one of the crazy things that this guy would do trying to do just that was whenever it would be close to count time, I'm not talking about actually count time, anytime that it would be close to count time, 15 minutes before count to be more specific, this guy would be fully dressed in his prison uniform and standing at the foot of his bed. Now the crazy thing about it is after four o'clock in the afternoon and up until seven o'clock in the morning, prisoners don't gotta be fully dressed. You ain't gotta be in dress compliant. You can wear your sweatpants, you can wear your t-shirt, you ain't gotta wear that prison uniform. However, this guy would do just that. He would remain in that prison uniform all day and all night. And at nighttime count, at about 9 o'clock at night, 15 minutes prior to that, he would be standing at the foot of his bed in full dress compliance like a damn Marine. Hey man, you know, they're, you know they're not counting for another 15 minutes, right? Is my, is my voice working? Can you, can you hear me? I am the perfect prisoner. 
15 minutes prior to count, he would be standing there just like that. 15 minutes after count cleared, and count can sometimes not clear for 30, 45 minutes, but 15 minutes after count cleared, this guy was still standing there like, perfect prisoner right here, perfect. I'm the prisoner you should all want to be like. This guy was terrible. And because of the fact that he was so terrible, something so terrible would end up happening to him. This one night, this guy went to lay down on his bunk, and when he did so, all of a sudden, it must have been like the most overwhelming sensation ever. It might have been a lot like that time when I was working in that tray room, and I popped those two lids off of that tray, and it was just like, oh, what is this? It might have been just like that. I can imagine that when his head hit that pillow, he probably felt something warm and squishy right there nestled up against his cheek. Gone! Gone! I need the cameras immediately! You need to roll back the cameras and find out who did this to my pillow! I'm the perfect prisoner! Somebody doo-dooed in that man's pillow. And as crazy and funny as this was, and also absolutely disgusting and nasty, I gotta assure you that the dudes who did this, they were definitely caught because this cadre went to the guards, told them to run the cameras back. They did just that, found these guys, put these guys in isolation for like a month. And this cadre also pressed assault charges on the two prisoners who were responsible for this. Now, it only took one person to actually fill up that pillow, but he also needed somebody else who was gonna look out for him as well. So that's why there was two people who got charged with this. And I have no idea how much time they got for this. Hell, I couldn't even imagine going to court with that kind of a charge. Your Honor, I know it sounds real crazy what I did, but you gotta understand me, y'all. He was a cadre, Your Honor. I had to do it. I'm willing to take whatever kind of... What? Ten years? I can't even imagine what they got for that. Hey, look. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!